uh, been pregnant for way too long. Let's tell the DJ turn it off. All by yourself today. How are you? I'm lonesome today, aren't I? <laughs> and I hear there's a reason that you're lonesome today. What is that, Rosanna? Well, I know everybody's been waiting. Stephanie's a ticking time bomb, so she's <laughs> going to have her baby. Yay, today we think, huh? Today, maybe tomorrow. We'll see, we'll see. But soon, <laughs> definitely soon. She I'm did sure call in and say, I'm not going to make the video today, guys. I think I'm going to have a baby instead. So Roselle and I were kind enough to let her off the hook and allow this to happen. And so that means we get to talk to Rosella today. And we were thinking that, it, let's say Stephanie has her baby, which she's going to mm -hmm. do. And yep. she wants to look for homes. I was asking Rosella, what should she be looking for with a child and looking for homes? Is there anything in particular? What would you answer to well, that, Rosella? Well, I know we were doing like a fun scenario, like let's say Stephanie wanted to buy a, a home. She is not a first time home buyer, but let's Correct. pretend she was, because then that'll help out and we can bring you into that conversation. So let's say That's we good. had as a first time home buyer and she was shopping because she is having a baby and they need a bigger house or whatever. Yep. Um, yeah, so for first time home buyers, John, I'm sending them your way. What would that look like for them just to get it started? Well, um, if you've listened to our other video about first time home buyers, there's absolutely no difference in the loan program whatsoever. We don't care if you have children or not. We are not a problem. You still need to qualify for the loan, however. And as we talked about before, there are low down payment options, 3% down with conventional for first time home buyer. There are down payment options that will allow people with less than or equal to 80% of the area medium income to get better rates. All of that still applies and you can check out the previous video for that, which means there are some really good options, Rosella, for anyone who's a first time home buyer to purchase a home, including government, FHA, three and a half percent down. We have down payment okay. assistance program for zero down if you'd like to do so. So they're all still available. Quick question on that, because I've had this question recently from a couple of first time home buyers. What is the minimum credit score that you're typically looking at for a first time home buyer that's just getting into the process that they need to that's be at? Great question. Fannie Mae has a minimum credit score of 620. However, okay. I will tell you, if you have a score below 680 and you're going to do a Fannie Mae loan, conventional kind of loan, and you're going to put a low down payment down, like 3% or 5%, it almost isn't worth it to get that kind of a loan because the cost of the rate is so high because of the credit score, especially with a low down payment. And the mortgage insurance cost is so high that typically our clients take a look at an FHA loan instead, which is 3.5% okay. down and very, very kind to credit scores with a much lower rate, cost of rate, and also much lower mortgage insurance. So normally they'll get a government loan, VA or FHA, maybe even USDA with lower credit scores. And just so you know, Rosella, we can do FHA down to like a 550 credit score. The rate is somewhat okay. higher and the underwriting is a little more particular when you're below 600 with your score, but you can still get an FHA loan. Okay, that's really good to know. Awesome. All right, so moving on to the next part of it. Once they come my way after they got the lending side sorted out, let's yeah. say you're shopping with kiddos. We're going to ask you, okay, what's something that you need in your home? Space, right? Kids require a little more space. <laughs> Like an extra bedroom, up, maybe, right? <laughs> boy, do they take up a lot of room. Yeah, so that's something that they often are needing is the space. Another thing is they often want something to do with, like, outdoors, their yard. That's one Good thing point. they look for is a fenced yard to keep those kiddos, keep them in, keep them locked in. Because <laughs> if they're anything like mine, they, they like to run. They're wild. John, I know that you have kids. What was something that you wanted in a home when you were shopping? Well, when we were shopping for a home, when we had kids, we were very concerned about the neighborhood and schools, Rosella. That was one of two of the biggest things that we looked at there because sooner or later, our kids were going to be going to a school. And as a matter of fact, when we bought our last home in Washington State, our kids were going to school down in Seattle. I'm a rural kid, as you know, from Montana. Seattle's kind of a big city to me, although I love living there when we were there. 
I still wanted to raise my kids in a more rural environment. So even the rural aspect of it, we were looking for, and we moved about, oh, 45, 50 minutes north of Seattle at that time. So we were checking out schools up here and the neighborhood around here, and it all seemed to fit for us. Okay. Okay, I hear what you're saying is that someone's school district and neighborhood is going to play a big role in it. I agree with you on that one because I also moved outside of town to a rural community because I wanted to to raise my child in the rural setting as well. So totally understand that. Um, so we have space, location is going to play a huge one for neighborhoods, things like that. One other thing that um, is really important is sometimes the age of the home. People are getting into these homes and they're, they're raising their babies and they just don't have the time or, you know, the ability to work on these homes and invest into them. And so sometimes like new construction homes are really great because they're brand new and they're getting into them and they're not having to worry about doing any work. So that's another thing is sometimes the age and condition of the home plays a big role in that as well. I think that is a very good point, Rosella. And I would add to that that if you can't afford that new construction home, because it's a new construction home, but there's that little older home not too far away, but in a neighborhood you like and it needs a rehab, we can do a rehab loan for you, both yeah. in the conventional and in the FHA world. And you can change that home, the older home, into a new feeling home anyway. You can change almost anything you want in a home, new kitchen, new roof, new flooring, new stuff. And you can certainly make it the home that you'd like. Yeah, if your kiddos are already older and you're not really like Stephanie getting ready to have the newborn and you guys are wanting to take the adventure of rehab and do it that way, absolutely. There are definitely homes in our community that would fit your needs there as well. There you go. I yep. think we should do a whole other video on rehab loans, guys. So Roselle and Stephanie, I will probably do that coming your way. We've done a rehab. I can't remember if we've done a full rehab one yet. I'm surprised. I don't we either, haven't. but if we have, it's been a while, so it's time we did another one, Rosal. Right. No kidding on that one. I'm trying to think off the top of my head what something else that um bathrooms. <laughs> bathrooms uh, is something else that people with kids are like, we have to have two bathrooms. Like they ain't sharing any. Yeah. They ain't doing it. And I, I grew up with a family of all girls and we had one bathroom. So I understand the struggle totally. I so understand because when we moved into our new home, we had four girls and girls like to use the bathroom longer than boys is what I've determined. OK, and so I actually put two sinks in the extra bathroom downstairs with a mirror on each sink. So even though there was only one bathroom there that they were sharing, we had the bathroom upstairs. We had actually three bathrooms by the time I got done. It was really helpful for those girls yeah. who wanted to use it. Yeah, absolutely. That is definitely <laughs> something that um, a lot of people with the kiddos that are shopping, they're like, we need two bathrooms. And I'm like, I hear you on that one. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's anything else that usually are like big ticket items for people that are first time home buyers with kiddos that are coming my way. They need the space. They want the bathrooms like on the lending side. They need it to work out financially for them. So you've taken care of them there. They figured out their community where they want to be at. And those are pretty big ticket items that are helpful for us to narrow down the criteria and get them started with their search. Absolutely true. Um, I mentioned that if your income is such that you're in, uh, below 80% of what's called the area medium income, there are special financing with lower rates is what that means for you. So we're going to okay. chat about that. And also along with that, there are neighborhoods that Fannie Mae wants to lend in as well, that they'll offer the same thing to you there. So if your income doesn't meet the guidelines, but the neighborhood does, you can potentially do it that way too. Are you able to maybe provide us with a list of those communities within Spokane that we could shop for certain buyers that are gonna need that? Somehow I thought you might ask that question, <laughs> Rosella, and absolutely we can. I'll provide that okay. to Rosella and Stephanie, and they'll yeah. have it available. And guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, remember, subscribe, like the video, all those cool things. And also reach out to us if you want to know what neighborhoods and wherever you may be at. We're happy to help you with that. Absolutely. And if you're on the same adventure as Stephanie right now with your new baby mm -hmm. and you're looking to buy, let us know. <laughs> yeah, we're really baby friendly right now, as you can tell. We're extra baby friendly. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> 
Rosella, thanks for showing up today when Stephanie did. We always appreciate you guys, and I enjoy our conversations always as well. They're informative and educational, and I learn something pretty much every conversation. Thanks for that. I um, also forgot to tell you congratulations, John, because Stephanie's having a baby. What does that mean? That means I'm going to have another grandchild, Rosella. You're going to be grandpa again for number uh, how many? Yeah. Or I know more than I can count. I'm telling you, I think we have, I have to talk to Teresa, my wife and ask her these questions. <laughs> I believe the county number now is nine. So this will be number 10, I think. That's a lot. All right. That's a lot. Yeah. I can't keep track. Congratulations to you as well there, grandpa. All right, All right guys. I'll thanks for you. Thanks for hanging in there and filling in for Stephanie and you today. We appreciate it. Good information. We'll chat with you next time. All right. See you, John. I've been pregnant for way too long. No, no, I tell the DJ, turn it off.